everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I'm really excited for what I have in store today. My very good friend, Jordan Mulroney, is here with me today. And we're just going to be talking about the real estate market and his experiences and his perspective with what's going on. So Jordan, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So go ahead and tell everyone a little bit about who you are and your experience in real estate. Yeah. So uh, my name is Jordan Mulroney. I'm a real estate uh, broker associate at Remax and Vicelia. I work on a team as well at Rock and Real Estate. So Rock and Real Estate at Remax and Vicelia. Um, I'm native to Visalia, and I, uh, I grew up here, born and raised, and I've been in real estate now just about four years, about four years. Awesome. Yeah. So you know what you're talking about. A little bit. A little <laughs> Definitely. Bit. <laughs> no, I'm so excited to have you here today because I really wanted you to share your perspective and your experiences in this market. I've been keeping my audience and my clients updated from my talks with Todd the Lender on the market and everything. So right now, what are you experiencing in this market? You know, it's really a nuts market. Um, I, I saw this meme on Facebook the other day that said, you know, someone asked, what's the market like today? And it's, hey, remember when you were trying to buy toilet paper in March? <laughs> That's yeah. what the market is today. And especially if you're a first-time home buyer, an FHA buyer, or even a VA buyer right now, it can be very, very difficult. And um, really in the price point of 200000 to 250000 it's it's very difficult. It's very difficult for buyers right now. And yeah. if you need closing costs or you need... Um, any sort of seller concessions or assistance, it can be really hard. Definitely. Yeah. So what are some things that you're doing right now to help your offers get accepted to yeah. get your clients at home? So what we're trying to do is, uh, one, we're trying to connect a little bit. So we're trying to make our clients, and uh, you, I'm sure you may have talked to your viewers about this before, but a uh, letters from the heart. Um, mm -hmm. This is a big deal. Uh, uh, Victoria and I actually did a transaction together, and my client submitted a letter to, of the heart to her and her husband. Yes, it and, works. Yeah, and it does, <laughs> and, it, and it's great. And so we, you make your clients more of a person, and you make them less of just a number on a paper, right? Mm -hmm. And just a name, and they don't matter. So um, I'm doing that. Number two is uh, I'm connecting with the agents. So I've been in business now for a little while around here. I know quite a few of the agents. I'd say I probably know about 80% of the agents in Tulare County's multiple listing service. Um, I service Tulare, Kings, and Fresno counties, and, but my main focus is here in Visalia in this area. Mm -hmm. And so having relationships with those agents goes a world of difference. Um, for one, you get some you know, inside information of what may be coming on the market, um, but also you get a lot of good information of what the other offers are. So offers are not necessarily confidential mm -hmm. um, unless you submit a non-confidentiality agreement before you submit the offer, um, which is kind of not the common practice here in Tulare County. Um, uh, my understanding is they use it a lot in Los Angeles and in San Francisco when you have these buyers with big names and they don't want everyone knowing who, right. who made offers on the property. But so we're, those are those are other things we talk about as well. Is, you know, the fact that if I know the agent, it's going to help my clients a lot better. So I try to make sure I have those relationships. And I'd say lastly, uh, what's helping my clients the most is just writing strong offers, uh, being quick um, and being fast. So hits the market that morning, you're looking at it that afternoon, you have the offer submitted by that night. And that's just, you have to do it. And it has to be your highest and best from the start yep. um, and not trying to diddy dally. You really can't, you can't try to lowball here. Um, I like to use the example of, I just purchased a whole, everyone I'm sure has done this, but everyone's purchased like a home gym, right? Home weights yeah, and stuff. Right. And I paid about $2, $2 a pound for these bumper plate style uh, workout plates, right? Yeah. And $2 a pound is expensive. It is <laughs> overpriced for what it is. Yeah. But in this market, it's not expensive, it's the more. And yeah. so that's just what you have to know. And so, that's what we're seeing in the real estate market as well, is being able to really tell that, hey, this is not the market it was not even six months ago. Right. Six months ago, I would have recommended a complete different offer to my clients. Yeah. And in this, offer, in this market, even if there's no offers, even if we're not in a multiple offer situation, you still treat it like it is. Because at any second, it could become one. Absolutely. No, I love the way you put that. Thank you so much. This is really, really invaluable information, you guys. So write this down. Um, and so Jordan, as far as on the lending side of things, so as I mentioned, I've been doing my talks with the lender, we've been yeah. talking about rates. So with you working with your local lenders here that you're affiliated with, are you noticing any setbacks or obstacles that you're running into that you wouldn't normally when in the lending world? Yeah, so I would say, um, well, at the start of COVID, uh, what I experienced is, uh, like everyone, we weren't essential uh, here in California, we weren't essential for a little while. So we weren't allowed to sell any houses, we weren't allowed to show houses or anything like that uh, per the governor's orders. That quickly changed. Uh, California Association of Realtors lobbied on our behalf and made it to where we could sell real estate again. Um, but what we said, which was great, <laughs> but what we saw was that um, at the start of COVID-19, appraisers were having appraisals coming low. Um, and that could have been for a few different factors. It could have been one that they just didn't trust the market at the time. Uh, they were nervous themselves. A member of appraisers are people. And so their, uh, their appraisals are subjective, not objective, 
right? And so that's something they take into account the market and what it all what what it's all doing and all of this. So we were seeing a little bit of that, but now it's kind of faded away. I've mm -hmm. had probably six or seven that appraised at value. I had one that appraised low um, recently, but what happened was that was an out of the area appraiser who hadn't been working during COVID-19 originally, and this was a vacant house. So he went into it, appraised it, and didn't really have a good taste of the market. So we are seeing that a little bit, but not a whole bunch. Um, but right now, working with a good lender makes a world of difference. Um, Victoria will tell you, working with a local lender is the first step. That's not even, it used to be, hey, you should really try working with a local lender. Right. Now it's, hey, no, you need to work with a local yeah. lender. Because if you're not working with a local lender, the listing agent is going to say, go find a local lender. Mm -hmm. There's just no point. Why are we going to deal with, an, uh, with a lender who won't answer the phone or anything like this? We want to know that we can walk into your office and find out the information. And I think being creative with your, uh, with your lender as well. So like myself, I have a client right now who, it, we're, we're getting beat out. We're getting beat out a lot. And it's very, very difficult for her to be able to uh, find a property. But what we were able to do is get her uh, pre-approved for a different loan type and utilizing another uh, down payment assistance program. So where now she doesn't have to ask for any closing costs of the seller. Makes a world of difference. Awesome. And so this creativity with your lender makes, uh, makes a big difference for you as a buyer. So I'd highly recommend that, you know, if you're going to beat out a lot, talk to your agent and talk to your lender and say, hey, what can we do to be outside of the box? Be not just your normal, what are, you know, hey, here, let's push you through. Let's try the different things. And if these work great and if they don't, well, you didn't lose anything. You right. don't have any money on the line until you get accepted. Into something. That's right. So perfect. Yeah, yeah. Well said. Very good advice and very valid information. Thank yeah. you. So right now, how many clients are you juggling right now, Jordan? Oh God, it's, it's crazy guys. <laughs> um, it's crazy. I represent, so a little bit about me, I'm 24 years old and I represent probably primarily buyers. I represent a few sellers, um, but really my seller clients are always just friends or past clients or family or things like that. I don't have a huge seller client uh, presence right now, um, but a ton of buyers. Yeah. And there's a ton of buyers in the market right now. It's very saturated. And the reason for this is because interest rates are so low. Interest rates are so low and so it's working out perfectly for buyers and they are, they're approved for more. And so I probably say I'm working with, I'm juggling at least 10 buyers right wow, now. That's amazing. Um, and, and they're all pre-approved, ready to go, and they're just looking for housing. Right. And uh, that's just myself. I know that Victoria has other buyers as well, and we're just two agents. There's other, I mean, there is, there, there's 1,200 members in our, our county. county. So um, I heard at the Tulare County Association, no, that wasn't Tulare County, it was the California Association of Realtors, mm -hmm. uh, their Remind Expo last year. This is when we could actually have expos with people. Right, where you could get together. I, I look back, I'm like, that was so nuts. Yeah, yeah. You could actually get this like, close to someone, and it was okay. So long ago. And so... Uh, they announced that 1% of all Californians, and don't quote me on this, I don't want anyone putting it on my social media, Jordan, you were wrong, because this is just what I heard and I could be wrong. But 1% of all Californians hold the real estate license. Oh my Not God. all of them practice, not all of them sell more than That's one house. That's probably close to accurate, but, though, I believe it. Yeah, and you know, the National Association of Realtors says that the average agent in the United States makes about $47,000 a year. I mean, in some markets, that's great, and in some markets, you really can't survive on that. Mm -hmm. So. In some markets, the $47,000 a year is just a couple of sales. And for some, that's 10, 20 sales. Right. It's just going to depend. And so that's what we're seeing a lot. We're seeing a lot of competition, um, a lot of buyers in the market. And every agent has 10 buyers right now. I mean, yeah. it's just not Absolutely. It's just not even a, a, a question. It's crazy. Yeah. So the listings that you have had recently, mm -hmm. how quickly did they sell? So I've got a few. So I had one that sold. It was so funny, guys. So what happened was, I listed it and we listed it about $5,000 over where we did a price reduction to. So we started at two, oh gosh, you remember this one. Um, yeah, I do. It was 240, yeah. 249 something yeah, like that. We'll go with that. We'll just say it's 249. <laughs> and so it was 249,000. And I had 17 showings in the first week. And I sat across the table with my sellers at the end of the week with no offer. And they said, Jordan, what's wrong? We had all these clients, mm -hmm. all these buyers walk through our house. Why didn't we get an offer? I said, well, we haven't got any complaints on anything else. So let's adjust the price. Let's drop the price by $5,000. Let's yeah. bring it to 344, right? Or 244, 244, 244, yeah. 244 it's $244,000. And so we did that. I ended up with another, gosh, 10 showings in the next three days and ended up with six or seven multiple offers. Sometimes it's all it takes. One yeah. thing. Yeah. And it ended up closing with the person the uh, buyer who saw it the first time, the first half, the first showing, um, the first showing, they ended up purchasing the home. Uh, they just didn't write the offer originally because it was too high. And they were scared that in this market, they wouldn't get it accepted. So they were like, we're not even going to try. 
And come to find out, I had no offers. My clients had no offers. And so we reduced the price and then we had multiple. Um, but they still wrote a very strong offer. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's a really big thing as well is just take the risk. I tell this to all my clients. Mm -hmm. You can only, you don't, you don't have to only write one offer at a time. It's highly recommended. I won't let a client more, write more than one active offer at a time. Mm -hmm. um, so if you have two properties you're interested in, pick one. Right. And then once you pick that one, write an offer. And then have the other one written in the background. And then once this one gets accepted, move forward. If it gets countered, okay, try it. If you, know, if you can get accepted, great. But if it gets denied, just shoot the other one. Mm -hmm. And so having those, those really quick um, moves right. makes a world of difference right now. Right. And so uh, you know, I, no one's really traveling COVID. No one's really doing much. But I love to travel. And so I like to go up to the mountains. I like to go to the beach and all these things. I can't even get away for a weekend. Yeah. And I think everyone's feeling this. I know. It's, it's funny. Good. To prepare for this, Jordan came over and he's been here for about an hour and yeah. the entire time he's been on the phone. It's well, like, don't even time. start exactly. this. And, and that's not to be like, oh, hey, I have all these clients. That's just because I'm an active agent in this market, just like Victoria is. And just like every other agent in our MLS is. Uh, we happen to work in Tulare County, which has, I would argue, the best agents in the area. Um, and not just the area, but I'd, I'd argue somewhere in the state because we have a very different feel here in Tulare County. I had, um, this is going off on a tangent. Go ahead. But I had a, um, I had a client who calls a, a new construction uh, sales company. And uh, the way it works, guys, if you're representing, Victoria may have told you this in the past, but if you want to look at new construction, call your agent first. Always. Let them Always. take Always. away. Treat it like it. we have access to every single home. Doesn't matter if it's resale, doesn't matter what it is. And so she called them, she called the new construction directly. I knew the new construction sales rep. We were good friends. And so she said, hey, Jordan, I'm going to have you be their agent. I, you get to help them. You'll get paid. The whole nine yards. And so I'll actually get to be a part of that deal. Um, but what I'm saying with that is that you just have to be creative right now. And you have to be willing to adapt and to adjust. But those relationships allow you to do that. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the relationships, then you're not going to be able to do that. And that's really a big deal. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh, this has been so much information in such a short time. I know, it's only been a few minutes. I'm <laughs> so glad. This is exactly why I brought Jordan. He's a great friend of mine. We've done transactions yeah. together. I look up to him. I call him for advice. And we're yeah. not even in the same brokerage. Yeah. But that is the culture we have here. And, and that's Tulare County. For yeah. Guys. Um, this is what we see a lot. So in other areas, and I don't know the specific areas. I work Tulare King for Fresno counties, and they're all very similar. Uh, but in some areas, I do know that it's doggy dog. It's, mm -hmm. hey, that, age, yeah, that agent's with a different brokerage, that person's with this, that person's with that. And um, due to the National Association of Realtors Code of Ethics, I don't ever speak bad about any other agents, uh, but this is just the way it is. Then you can see it on like Selling Sunset. I mean, you can, oh see, my God, you can yeah. see it on HGTV. <laughs> I mean, this is not a new concept for anyone. But in Tulare County, we don't have that. We work with everybody and we help each other out. Um, my, one of my last transactions with the, was with an agent who had only sold one house before. She didn't know anything. And so I walked her through the entire thing. And that's just awesome. what we do because someone did that for me. That's one. right. At one point, and someone, we all start someone, somewhere. Someone did that for her. Yeah. It's just part of what we do. And so I think just being there for each other in our market makes a really, really, big, makes a really big difference. Um, but it also helps the client. And that's what all of this is about. Absolutely. Everything we do Always. is to help the client. And so you'll have some clients that really, um, really want to see like 20 homes. And then they make the decision based on that. And you have some clients that just want to see the one home. And if you know the agent for that one home and you're the, you're the buyer's agent, it's going to help you. It's mm -hmm. going to help you because that may be their dream home. And you need to have a real conversation with that agent to see how we can work as a team to get them this home. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I love the way you work. I love everything about all your knowledge and how you like basically teach and show your clients and other agents. And I just love how you share. So thank you thank so you, much, Jordan. You, I you. so appreciate you today. Do you have any other final little words of wisdom for everyone? No, um, I'm going to do a shameless plug. Uh, follow me on Instagram. <laughs> uh, Jordan, uh, Jordan Dotmorumi. So uh, Victoria will probably tag me on something. So Absolutely. Everyone, please uh, follow me. But Jordan. I'm an Instagram nerd. I'm not an influencer. So don't, I, <laughs> I'm not like, I don't look cool on Instagram, but you'll see a lot of pictures of me running and you'll see pictures of my dog and you'll see pictures of houses. So yep. if you like all that stuff, follow me on Instagram. So. Real person, real real estate agent. Yeah. So I mean, this is what, you know, it's so funny. Before this, Victoria said, uh, you know, we're, we're sitting here and I say, oh, I didn't know this is going to be on camera. So I wore a ball cap and a t-shirt. <laughs> Well, this is a loyal to local t-shirt. It Sally works. By Sally Chambers Commerce. This is Commerce. how we are. This is yeah. how we operate. Mm -hmm. We're regular people as well. I tell all my clients, you can call me. I'm very, I love communication. So I say, you can call me um, as long as I have internet service. So as long as I'm not in the mountains, I'll answer my phone. Or 
cell service I'll answer my phone. And then I either have to have cell service or I have to be awake. If I'm awake and I have cell service, you're going to get there your you answer. go. If I don't, then you're not going to. So if you text me at 1 a.m. and I'm awake, I'll answer. If I'm yes. asleep, I won't. And so that's how we operate in Slayer County. And that's just why it's great. It really is just a great place to live, work, and be able to sell real estate. Awesome. Yeah. Well, you heard it here, you guys. Jordan Bill Rooney with Remax, very good friend of mine. Thank you again for being yeah, here today. And we'll definitely do this again soon. Yeah. Bye, guys. Bye.